When I first heard of Anchor, I thought it was too good to be true. Podcasting is supposed to be hard and expensive and require a lot of equipment to do it right. But when a trusted friend took his podcast online and shared how simple it was, it made a believer out of me in a hurry. Podcasting is fast becoming a platform to build a target audience of not just listeners, but also guests. And with all other social media platforms capturing the eyes and thumbs of people, podcasting captures the ears and the hearts. While it might seem like a chore, Anchor makes editing and distributing your episode easy. With a full feature drag and drop style interface and the ability to automatically send your episodes out to iTunes, Apple Podcasts, and many other platforms, you'll be online in no time. Got a podcast you're itching to go live with? Head over to anchor.fm to learn more. Hey, you're on the hot mic at Arch DevOps with Fritz. I'm here today with David Summerfleck, founder of DMS.Blue. How are you doing today, sir? I'm doing very well. Thank you for inviting me. Thank you I for coming. It. Not a problem. And I know we, we do these podcasts, we push them up audio only, but this guy really likes the color blue. He's got a blue jacket, a blue shirt, blue glasses. I think that headset you've got on is also blue. Yeah. It is? Okay. I thought I, I, thought I caught a glimpse of some blue on there and I'm like, I'm not surprised. And, well, you uh, know what? If I'm not on camera, I'll go ahead and lean back here a little bit. But um, I was never a very good uh, feng shui, color coordinated, uh, wardrobe type of person, although I do appreciate fashion. Yeah. I just never really knew what to wear. One day my wife just said, what's your favorite color? I said, well, blue. So she said, just wear blue all the time. Just solve the problem. Yeah. And I said, you know what? That's why I married you. You're one smart cookie. Yeah. I traded up when I got married too. And I, I tell my wife often, I'm like, babe, don't ever die on me. I'm like, we'll starve. I'll have to eat like hot dogs and ramen noodles forever. I mean, she's awesome at cooking. Yeah. She's great at thinking of things that I just don't think of because I've got this man brain that doesn't do it. And it's just, it's crazy. Stuff that's obvious to her. And I'm like, why didn't I think of that? Dang. Yeah. So, but we're a good fit for each other. Um, so DMS stands for, you said digital marketing solutions. Is that right? <laughs> Either one is okay. It's my initials, Yeah. but it's also what I do. So um, I'm a digital marketing specialist uh, and I have about maybe 20 to 25 years experience working for several marketing and advertising agencies since the internet began. Mm -hmm. I've also worked in copywriting, content marketing. I uh, worked in uh, marketing and advertising for a real estate company, for publishers. And I've also freelanced in between. And um, in between and during some of those jobs, I started uh, a nonprofit mediation business, which mm -hmm. was horrible. Um, <laughs> And I've also had other experiences and I was also a certified small business mentor for an organization called SCORE, which okay. is a division of the United States Small Business Administration. Right. And in that capacity, I probably consulted with several hundred business owners around the world. And after doing that, I really felt like um, I really need to have the confidence to be able to talk to business owners and entrepreneurs of all kinds on any level mm -hmm. and know that I may not know everything, but I'm going to be able to speak to the problems that they're facing. And that really um, brought me out of the, the proverbial shell. Mm -hmm. Nice. Because I really wasn't sure. I, was, I wasn't comfortable calling myself an expert, but after departing score and just saying, look, I, I can't do anymore. This is exhausting. I'm getting more phone calls every day, more emails than anybody can keep track of. This is insane. Yeah. And after doing that for so long, I just said, you know what? I think I know just about whatever anybody's going to throw my way. I know how to handle it. Nice. Well, what do you think is, you know, kind of hearkening back on your experience with score, you know, what were, what were some of the most common challenges that small business owners would come to you with? And if I'm giving yeah. you like, you know, PTSD flashbacks or something, we can just edit this part out, but you know. no, not at all. Okay. You seem like a laid back guy. I'm like, I can ask. I whatever. try to be, if go. I don't drink too much caffeine, I try to be, you can ask anything you want. Um, <laughs> absolutely. Um, every podcast that I do, I always tell them, ask me anything you want. 
I, you know, that's the whole point. Yeah. And, um, you know, one of the reasons why I stepped away from score was because I kept seeing the same problems over and over again. And I'm talking four or five times a day mm -hmm. for years to the point where I would stop after six months and just say, I can't take this anymore. I need to take a break for a month. And then I'd come back and go, okay, let's start again. And the number one problem would be small business owners, entrepreneurs, service providers, whatever, basically jumping in. Mm -hmm. People would buy a hotel with no prior hotel management experience. Mm -hmm. And they were calling, asking for help. People would go and buy restaurants, no ex prior experience. And right. they would only hire other family members. And then they wonder why things are going down the tubes. Right. Um, with digital marketing, because that was my, my main area of emphasis, I would get the most references and phone calls for that very specifically. And that problem was always the same. Always. Why is my free DIY template website, whatever they want to call it, mm -hmm. why is it not generating any leads? And you'd have to, I'd have to break it down. So, okay. Leads mean more phone calls and more emails. Are you checking your email every day? Are you responding to phone calls every day? Are they being forwarded to you correctly? Does your website have any SEO? Well, what's SEO? How much is SEO? As if you're, you know, making a cup of tea or something, you just add water and stir. Mm -hmm. It doesn't work like that. So then once we find out what's going on, it's an issue of commitment. Is okay. this a legitimate profit driven business for you? Or is it just an idea that you have that you're not fully committed to? Because unless there is profound need, and I'd like to underline that word, if there is not a profound need, then there's no commitment. And if there's no commitment, it's not a real business. It's just right. not. Yeah, it's not. It's a job at that point. And or a hobby that you do for shits and giggles. Uh, is it okay if I curse a little bit? Yeah, that's okay. okay. Yeah, if, it's, if you're not fully committed, it's okay. Just be honest about it. It's a hobby. I don't care. Yeah. And be clear about that. And just say, you know what? I don't want to spend any money. Okay. Thank you. God bless you. Have a nice day. I have a family to support, especially now more than ever. Mm -hmm. I mean, I'm retired now. I don't have to worry about it, but I'm not going to spend countless hours talking to people who don't want to commit. Right. I mean, it's, it's a waste of my time and it's ultimately a waste of their time too. Because right. if you're not at a point where you're willing to commit, read books on business, have fun, whittle away at it, do it whenever you feel like it. But you really, you're not in a position, you shouldn't be talking to somebody who's really serious and committed about it. Right. If that makes sense. It makes perfect sense. And, and I've run into, I mean, I haven't been an entrepreneur for too terribly long. I guess it's been a little over four years. Um, so I haven't been like rubbing elbows with the greats for, for too terribly long, or maybe I haven't run into any greats yet. I don't know. But um, the there are thing, greats there. I, do, I don't, I'm sorry to interrupt you. I don't think there are greats per se. Yeah. I think there are people who made it and might be comfortable. Yeah. Um, there may be people who are struggling, but are all right. Mm -hmm. And those who have failed in terms of just financially, they, they, you know, they're still around, but they didn't really fail. That's not fair. I mean, yeah. when you look at people like Damon John and these people on Shark Tank that are millionaires, that looks all great. But the reality is they're all, most of them are carrying some type of debt. Mm -hmm. They're all one divorce away from losing millions upon millions. You know, right. so, you know, no one is impervious. Everybody is one scandal, one tweet, one divorce, or one bad investment away from, you know, having to start all over again. Right. So it's very uh, important, I think, for anybody out there interested in business um, to really, you know, see this thing as a whole journey, not as a single item and see beyond the facade of people prancing around and, 
telling you things that really don't have any basis in reality, and they speak in very broad terms. Be specific. Hold people accountable. What do you mean by that? How is that possible, this incredible thing that you're saying? Right. You know? But uh, I just wanted to interject that because I think it's really important now. There's a lot of people out there who are really struggling, and they really shouldn't be investing in get-rich-quick schemes or, or following these, um, you know, the, these guru guys who are not um, speaking from a place of authenticity. Right. Well, I agree. And I think, you know, another, the, the other side of the coin to what you said was, is uh, for people that are wanting to start a business, like let's say, for example, they have the passion, they're willing to commit, but holy moly, it's scary to them because look at all these people that have, you know, bajillions of dollars, right? And it's like, Mm -hmm. they don't realize what you just said that, hey, they're one step away from losing it all. It's not, yeah. Yeah, they put on a facade. They look like they know what they're doing, but there's a lot of luck that comes into play. And and budget was a, was and is um, an issue that I've seen sink so many businesses where they they do not want to invest. Yeah. Period. Yeah. Um, I spoke to a lawyer recently who said you know, well, look, I want to start my own law practice. Okay, that's, that's wonderful. I have the utmost respect for lawyers because I understand the, the education and the financial commitment, the time commitment that goes into getting that far. And, um, but there's, there, it's also an adversarial profession. So there's always a lot of pushback and resistance. What do you mean by that? Right. And they don't want to spend any money. So with this lawyer, he said, okay, well, I want to start my own law practice. I have a website. I'm not getting any phone calls at all. Mm-hmm. Not a one. So I spent like an hour trying to get the answers out of him. And of course, he had a free Wix or Weebly do-it-yourself or template site. And of course, that's why nobody could find him at the top of Google because it didn't have what professional uh, law firm sites have. Right without getting too technical about it. So there's no way he's going to outrank any competitors. And I said, well, this is going to require commitment on your part that you're either going to work with a professional and outsource it and commit to spending three or $4,000 in order to make back triple or quadruple that a few months down the road. Are you willing to do that, sir? And it doesn't have to be me because I could take you or leave you. And he said, oh, no, I, I can't do that. I would never spend a penny on that. Hmm. So I just, you know, I, I tried to explain it to him and just said, well, I wish you all the best. Yeah. And um, I've had that same discussion with, you know, probably hundreds of business owners, um, people who own pawn shops, retail stores, restaurants. They do not want to spend a single penny on anything that has to do with online marketing. And now with COVID-19 stalking people, literally, if you can't deliver to people's doors, if you are not equipped to do video conferencing, how are you going to compete? Yeah. You can't. And if you still require people come into a physical brick and mortar store, or you have to go meet them somewhere, you risk being exposed to this thing. And you may be fine. You may not be. You may get it and then spread it to a thousand other people. So, you know, this idea that, well, we just can't invest a few thousand dollars to work with an experienced professional in order to reach more clients is just, it's fear-based. It is. It's it's letting fear overwhelm the ability to think clearly. And that's one of the things that I always do is I listen to my fear, but when it comes to making a decision, I always say, is this decision based on fear or is there logic? You know? Right. Yeah. But, but I would say those are the two biggest issues that I see with people that they jump in, whether they're prepared or not. And usually they're not, and they don't want to spend any money. Yeah. They don't, they don't understand the concept of ROI, which is return on investment. Um, is it okay to talk about that real quickly? Yeah. If let's say 10 years ago when I would put ads in newspapers for my agency, 
in from my mediation business. I put ads in local newspapers, right? Mm -hmm. Back then, one ad in a local tabloid or newspaper would be about two grand, I think, at least two grand. And they would run the ad for several weeks, maybe right. a few months, I forget. And now if you tried to cut corners with them or negotiate on price, they just wouldn't do it. Right. And they just, well, sir, you just don't, you don't have to put an ad. We don't need you to, to do it. Because they're like, look, you have to have the ad run for several weeks in order to get the phone calls and the emails coming in. Is it worth it for you to get three or four good referrals? Are you willing to pay this amount of money if it means getting this number of referrals every month? And we can't guarantee it. Right. And yet lawyers, doctors, dentists, accountants will all spend thousands and thousands of dollars every month to go and put an ad on the side of a bus on a billboard or on TV, but they're loath to do it on the internet. Why With, is that? I don't know because you would think it, the internet's kind of like a unifying medium. Like yeah. the bus can only be in one place at one time. If you happen to see it with your That's eyeballs, right. right? Same thing for a billboard, same thing for a newspaper. Um, I don't know why people don't want to do it on the internet. It seems like the best place to do it. It is. Technically, statistically, you get more return on investment for investing in digital marketing than you do any other form of, of uh, media. And I have all of this on my website. I have an FAQ page. I have like 45 blog posts so far. And obviously, I'm going to be writing a, a lot more in the future. But the issue is they don't see the return on investment. They see things like Wix and Weebly and Squarespace. They mm -hmm. see people working and offering to build cheapy websites for $5. And they're lured in by this promise of something for nothing. Right. Whereas you don't see that with other forms of advertising or marketing. So they get lured into that. And then what happens is they end up losing business to competitors. And I've actually seen people go under is a result of just flat out refusing to invest in internet marketing or they delegate it to their son because they think it's, you know, it's some new age techie thing that, you know, well, my son is good at Excel. He can do it. <laughs> That's not how it works. No, absolutely you know, not. Absolutely not. I could tell you a million stories about people who had uh, pawn shops, accounting practices, restaurants, um, who wanted to enlarge their business, but didn't want to invest in digital marketing and are long since gone. Right. Just gone. And what they could have done was crazy. I mean, I remember the, the it was a secondhand store in a pawn shop in one location. And he had literally hun hundreds, if not, he had thousands of things in his store. It was a two story store in a strip mall. And he didn't want to invest in a website. He wanted to be able to upload things to eBay, have private auctions, sell things, take payments, um, have commercials, host a podcast, all of this. But he didn't want to pay to have a website. He wanted the free DIY thing. And he went under, you know, about two years after I talked to him. Yeah. You know. it's, that, it's that lack of foresight. And I think the, yeah. key, the key phrase you said is, you know, you talked about return on investment and people mm -hmm. are thinking of, no, it's an expense. Like I'm going to spend this money yeah. and I'm not going to get it back. And it's like, no, it's an investment. Like I've had to change my verbiage a lot over the years because, um, you know, with the services we provide, I mean, we're also doing digital stuff. We do a lot with software testing and automation and it's, it's always, it's always an investment. I always say investment. How much, like, how much does it cost? I don't say yeah. that. It's like, what is the investment? You're going to get a return yeah. on this. And yeah, some people, and I used to be the same way, man. I used to be like, no, I don't need to spend money. I will do it myself. And I learned that is uh, stupid because <laughs> there's, there's only so much that I can do on my own. And mm -hmm. I really deep down, it's like the older I get, I want to spend less time doing everything. And I want to spend more time on the stuff that I'm good at. Yeah. You, know? you want 
to spend more time with your family. You want to spend time decompressing, not being stressed out all the time. You know, if you own a restaurant right now, you're losing money because Mm -hmm. people, now where I live in Southwest Florida, the restaurants are still open. The governor of Florida will not issue any kind of stay at home edict. And I yeah. don't think he will. I don't, no matter what happens with COVID-19, I don't think he'll ever issue a stay at home uh, order. And that's, you know, politics aside, it's just, it's a health issue, but the restaurants are still open. And I read that they're requiring that you people sit every other booth so that there's a lot of distance and space. Right. Mm-hmm. No, think about that. That means half the occupancy of that restaurant. Right. So no matter how popular that restaurant is, it cannot ever be seated to full capacity anymore. Right. So how much are they losing per day? And how long can they maintain like that? So are they equipped to take orders online? Most local bars and restaurants are not. Do they have interactive menus? So I can get on there and see what, what in the hell I'm going to order. Mm-hmm. Most don't, um, which is insane. I can go to Domino's or, or Little Caesars or whatever. I can place an order for a pizza and make my own. I can see what it will look like, pay for it online. They'll bring it to the door. I can go get it. Yeah. But most small local restaurants of every kind conceivable don't have it. They won't have it. It's either they flat out refuse to do it or they feel so overwhelmed that they're just like, I don't know where to begin. I'm not going to do it. Period. Yeah. yeah. And that and right it, there and is makes, like that fear issue. They yeah. don't trust people. Yeah. And, and how I react to that depends on the day of the week. You know, some days it just makes me feel really sad for them and I just don't feel like dealing with it. Some days it makes me angry and I feel like just saying, you know, what in the hell is wrong with you? What is it that you don't like about money? Yeah. You know, don't you owe it to your family? Do you care about providing for your family? Um, You know, I saw that CVS now, I just got an email before I came on the podcast. CVS was sending out emails saying, please don't come into the pharmacy. Go to the drive through window. We'll give you everything that you want. Mm -hmm. You don't even have to place it online because we're not equipped to have orders online. Yeah. Now you're talking a global pharmacy chain and they're not equipped to be taking orders for everything online. That's surprising. I thought they were set up to do that. Not for everything. Walmart well, get in there. Was, get in yeah. there. Help them. Yeah. Several days ago, Walmart was down. We could not place an order for pickup. Man. They couldn't do it. Um, my wife got a phone call this morning from a doctor saying, we're canceling appointments. In other words, the doctor is saying, look, I don't want your money. Mm -hmm. Because no matter what you, whether you have benefits or good benefits or Obamacare or not, every time you go to a doctor for a checkup or whatever, they can build the insurance company at least a couple of hundred, Mm -hmm. whatever your pay or copay is. And they're saying, no, we don't want your money. Stay home. So we're in a very different scenario right now, a very different set of circumstances. And every business owner should be looking at how can I do video conferencing? How can I do podcasting to promote my business? How can I do video chats? What can I do to engage PPC, which is paid advertisements? Mm -hmm. Um, You know, what can I do to reach out more to automate processes like what you said, to have my website basically be a a 24-7 portal to speak to my ideal consumer base. It's, it's, it's worth, you know, thinking about and getting clear about. And um, that's why I wrote my book, The Road to Digital Marketing Profits, mm-hmm. um, to try to speak to the most common problems that I see the small business owner and entrepreneur facing today when it comes okay. to digital marketing. Well, that's good. Yeah, and I know before we got on, before we hit the record button here, that was something we were talking about was, uh, you know, trying to demystify yeah. entrepreneurism. And some some people, they look at it and they think, I could never do that. But some of them think that because 
they're seeing these heavy hitters out there and they think, oh, I could never attain to that. Well, there are certain things that you should do and certain things you should not do. And then the rest of it is try it and see what works and what doesn't. It's a yeah. giant experiment. In, yeah. In Buddhism, there's, there's a, a thing they call the divine law mm-hmm. of cause and effect. And they see the concept of cause and effect to be divine insofar as it's profoundly simple, yet people are disconnected from it. So if I take my cup and I drop it on my foot, I'll get a big blue, you know, swelling area. Yeah. You know, Um, but when it comes to business, people will say, I want to start a business. I don't know what I really want to do. I don't know how I want to do it. I don't know who my ideal consumer or client or customer is or how I'm going to reach them or what my budget should be or anything like that or how I'm going to delegate, Mm -hmm. who my competitors are, how to learn from them. But I'm just going to start anyway. Yeah. And that's why statistically the failure rate for new businesses in America is something like 99%. I think – I forget what the numbers are specifically. I have them on my site, but most will go under in 16 months or less. Yeah. And I think within five years, I think it's 99.9% will be gone within five years. Yeah. Those that make it beyond the five year mark are more likely to succeed. So when I talk to people now, I say, well, how long have you been in operation? Usually if they say, well, less than five years, I say, well, all right. I say to myself, okay, do I want to proceed with this? Right. Are they nice people? Are they kind? Um, you know, are they, do, are they realistic about what they want versus what they're willing to invest? Do I really want to deal with this? If it's after five years, I'm like, okay, all right. You put in your dues. You have, you know, you put some, some true effort into this, mm-hmm. but it's very, very brutal out there, especially now you've got to be mobile. Yeah, you do. And that can be scary to some people, but it can also be very encouraging because everybody's got the same handicap yeah. right now. And yeah, some businesses are going to fail, but some of them are going to thrive and some new ones are going to come out of this because of the situation. So yes. And I guarantee you those that survive this will have learned how to pivot quickly and learned how to use digital marketing to their advantage. Yep. A lot of larger companies cannot pivot. They're too big. They're too cumbersome. They've got too many, uh, processes in place they can't do it um, and some smaller businesses can't mm-hmm. they won't or they can't so you're either too big or too small but if you can pivot and, and, and grow and change with the times you'd be glad you did I think mm-hmm. you know I wish there were more restaurants I could order from online I really do can you imagine all the neighborhood grocery stores right now that could be making money and competing with Amazon and eBay right now and Walmart, you know, I can't get the groceries that I want. Yeah. Not from Walmart or Amazon. Well, shoot. I think all they would have to do is partner up with Uber and, you know, have the stuff sent to places, you know, like you got a bunch of Uber drivers probably. Yeah. You could ship it. You definitely could. There's people out there. There's, there's people out there doing work and making money and there's, there's all kinds of approaches to this to keep things going. It's just, it's amazing. It's amazing you, that some companies wouldn't do something. Yeah. They either won't or they can't. It's one or the other. Yeah. And um, now is the time to pivot mm-hmm. if it's not too late to do that. Because like I said, if whatever it is that you do, I'm ordering all my food from uh, Amazon, eBay, uh, Walmart, mm-hmm. And we can't get half of the groceries that we used to. Right. Because Walmart doesn't have them. Amazon doesn't have them. I saw Amazon Pantry was down. 
they were down. Hmm. Walmart was down for at least a day where I could not, um, we could place orders for groceries, but we couldn't go pick them up. And we couldn't have them delivered. Yeah. So I said to Man. my wife, well, what's the point? <laughs> what is the point? If you could place the order, but you can't pick it up and you can't have it delivered, what, what good does it do you? Check back in a couple of days. <laughs> you know, I took your money and they'll hold your stuff for you. <laughs> yeah. I, yeah. And then, and then you got to wait a week for all the chargebacks. I, right. I tried to order things on Target and everything that I looked at was out of stock, out of stock. Hmm. So Man. all these mom and pop shops, all these people who, you know, say that they're business owners, I'll hold you to it. Now is the time to prove it. Right. But I also, at the same time, I understand that, you know, look, it's very, very brutal out there. People are losing their jobs and not by yeah. the hundreds or thousands, but by the millions. Yeah. I didn't look at the news today. God, God help the people in New York and California because mm -hmm. they're on their own. Yeah. Um, you know, if they do get some kind of stimulus check or something, it's one time. It's one shot deal. And, um, you know, it's very, very scary out there. It is. But I'm hopeful. I always see the brighter side of things. And I think things will pull out. I really think will. things will pull out. I'm convinced it will. Um, I am too. This is, yeah, this is not um, what it could have been. We're very, very, very fortunate that this virus is not um, a, div a different type of strain or more severe like uh, Ebola, which mm -hmm. was absolutely horrendous. And they, they, it was so terrifying that people were bleeding out of like every orifice. I mean, I, I can't even imagine what it was like for people. Mm -hmm. And, um, but it was so horrifyingly bad that they locked down the whole country where it originated from like immediately. And when you got it, you knew it. Yeah. You didn't carry it around with you for two weeks or for 27 days before it uh, manifested itself or you showed symptoms. Right. Um, if you got it, you got it. And you were, you know, pray, you know on your hands and knees. Um, so we're really fortunate, I think, as a country. We're very blessed that it's not as bad as it could have been. And I think, I think it's going to peak. It has to. Um, I think it's going to, based on everything that I've read and heard from, from doctors, I think it's going to peak probably within the next 60 to 90 days. Mm -hmm. um, and then if we don't do the lockdown like they do in China and other countries, it may take longer. Um, but I think it's going to peak at some point. And then, you know, everybody who can get it will have had it. And the rest of the people will be at home and then there won't be any new symptoms or any new carriers for another couple of weeks or another month or two. And they'll be like, okay, now we can get back to life as normal. Mm -hmm. And, um, and then I think Dr. Anthony Fauci was saying that he thinks it'll probably be a seasonal flu and we can hope that, you know, in a year or so that they'll have a vaccine for this or it'll just be a more mild strain. But I definitely do believe that, you know, we'll overcome it. There's no question about that. It's just a question of, you know, how, how badly are, is the economy going to be impacted and how many people are, um, are going to be impacted in ways that, you know, aren't going to be good at all. Mm -hmm. But I do think we're going to overcome it. There's no doubt. I know we will. You know, it's just what, what's going to be in, in left over. Yeah. You know, I wish I could say, you know, it's going to be cartoon time or whatever. But I, I, <laughs> I you know, I was following the news. I look at a website called refdesk.com. Yeah. And um, I look at that as a homepage. And what I do is I go over to the right and I look at all the headlines, for all the major news outlets, one right after the other in the span of like 10, 15 minutes. And mm -hmm. I just go through all the major news outlets, NBC, ABC, um, NPR, the New York Times, the Wall Street Journal, 
Um, I look at CNN, CNBC. Um, I look at all the major news outlets. And based on that, you can get a fairly accurate idea. I mean, obviously, some networks have more bias than others. And you can discern what that bias is one way or the other. But if right. you look at each major news outlet, you can get a consensus. Yeah. Everything's not horrible. Everything is not perfect. So right. what's the middle of the road? And based on what I've seen, that seems to be the consensus is that, you know, it's going to peak probably in a few months. And then the fallout, you know, right now, the unemployment, I think, is at record numbers. Mm -hmm. So those businesses who can pivot and really utilize this thing called the internet, do it. If you're yeah. not in a position to do it, then consolidate batten down the hatches as they say and and you know and take care of yourself and your family you know yep. until until the skies open up again yeah and they will yeah i gotta absolutely. say man this is one of the most laid back episodes i've done you are the most chill dude i never would have known this because we're both on reddit so but yeah we're like did you find me on reddit I did. I did. There was a podcast. Oh, yeah. Yeah. yeah that's there was right. a subreddit okay, on there. I try like, to hide my identity, but it pointless, really. Well, I won't tell anybody what your username <laughs> is, and um, they're not going to find mine either, although they could probably figure it out if they look uh, at my stuff. Yeah, if they look my for stuff. Blue, blue icons and blue cartoon characters, <laughs> it's usually going to be me. Yeah. You know, I, I thought it, in plain sight. I thought it was funny when you were talking about, like, you know, if I were to drop this mug on my foot, it would make a blue mark. And it's like, even his bruises are blue. That dude's yeah. brand is on point. So, well, I think we're coming up to a, a good stopping point here. And, you know, for the folks at home that are listening, uh, well, they are at home actually because COVID-19. Um, you know, there's a, lot of, there's a lot of good takeaways here. There's a lot of good takeaways here. There's a book that you've written that helps people understand digital marketing. That's awesome. You've yeah, got I don't a service. It. Oh, is it back there? Can you see it? I can't. Well, I mean, I see it, but my screen is tiny. Hang on one minute. I'll get up. Okay. All right. There we go. The book is there, and it is also blue. And, yeah, there's all kinds of good takeaways your, from this. Say again. Sorry. To your listeners. Yeah. The tall, skinny, eccentric, ball-headed guy who wears blue and has blue glasses got up and showed him the book cover, which is, of course, blue and white. <laughs> um, but uh, The Road to Digital Marketing Profits, available on Amazon. It is a workbook, uh, so it's not the traditional business book. But the idea behind it is... Um, if you pick the book up and you know nothing about digital marketing or you feel a sense of overwhelm from it, or you're just not getting the results that you want, or if you're a new business owner, by the time you're done with it, you'll know everything that you need to know to get busy and get down to the nitty gritty on it. But you'll also be able to go into a credit union and say, I want to take out a loan to jumpstart my business. Here's an organized structured business plan with how I will use digital marketing to get more leads. So yep. that's the idea behind it. I don't think it's perfect because I'm really hard on myself, but I think it's actually pretty good. They got two reviews and I was shocked. Yeah. The, well, from you know the five star reviews thus far. I was very worried about my reviews on Amazon because you take it very personally. You know, yeah. this is your baby. And, um, you know, I, I, there's always room to add more, but at some point you just have to say, look, I, I've added everything I can think of to add here. I can't fit the kitchen sink in. Right. But anyway, I didn't mean to cut into what you were saying. No, that's what I was going to say. And I think, you know, perfect is the enemy of good. You know, if it's something that would help yeah. people, I kind of wish I had read this four years ago when I first got started. So, well, it's always good meeting new people. Um, especially chill dudes like yourself, man. I'm glad to make your acquaintance. And I think, uh, I think we ought to have a part two sometime. There's a lot we could talk about. Would you sure, be up for that? To. Awesome. Okay. Well, I know where to find you. Um, so for the listeners that are hearing this right now, what would you say 
is a good reason for them to get on the podcast? Why should they get on an episode themselves? I think every person, no matter what you do, or even what your interests are, um, has something to share. Yep. You know, um, we're all human beings with hearts and souls and minds, and we all have something to share and we all have something to contribute to the larger um, humanity. No matter what your feelings are, um, we all have something to share. And I think it's really important to be connected to the rest of humanity, especially now. Yeah. You know, you can volunteer online, you can run your business, you can host a podcast, and have conversations with fun people or interesting people. You could be on other people's podcasts. Use this, what's going on, as the impetus to expand in new and different ways. That's what I think. Okay. And so that hopefully I answered in a long-winded way why people should be on podcasts. <laughs> you answered perfect, man. Quit beating yourself up. You're going to turn yourself blue. <laughs> I don't want to do that. <laughs> I don't want to do that. Well, it's good talking with you, man, and we will follow up and get another episode in the can sometime at your convenience, all right? Absolutely. Thank you so much for your time. All right. Take care, man. All right. You too. Bye-bye. Okay.